Hi, I'm Felix. I'm managing global communications at uh, Glovo. As you said, maybe you've seen our riders riding around with yellow backpacks. That's um, us those usually contain delicious food or other items. Our mission is to give everyone easy access to anything in their city, and by anything we mean anything. So we don't just deliver food, we deliver groceries as well, we deliver retail items. If you're an espresso coffee maker breaks, um, you can just order a new one, and you're gonna have it within 20 minutes. Now, we are a marketplace, we're a platform. We have uh, three main stakeholders, uh, our users, our consumers, um, the careers that deliver the orders, and uh, partner businesses. Now, I always think we're a big company, but just having heard of uh, Kindrel, um, <laughs> not so much, apparently. We have 4,000 employees um, globally. We're operating in 25 countries, largely in Southern Europe, Eastern Europe, uh, Central Asia, and Africa. We collaborate with 80,000 uh, careers that um, are largely freelancers or employed through third-party organizations, and we have 170,000 businesses um, that we collaborate with and that sell their products through our platform. Now those businesses, 90% um, of those are small and medium businesses. Um, we're born and raised in Barcelona, so founded in 2015, still founder-led. Uh, last year, we got acquired by Delivery Hero Group, which is the largest delivery company in the world, uh, operating in 70 countries total, with multiple portfolio brands. You may have heard of some of them, like Foodora, Food Panda, uh, Talabad in the Middle East, so that's all part of, uh, part of the group. Now, the company itself is still founder-led by our CEO, Oscar, and Sasha, and um, we're actually headquartered just uh, about a five-minute walk from here. So yeah, that was the commercial block. Now, a <laughs> little bit more on why we're all here, PR and communications. I thought I would give you a little bit of um, of an uh, insight into a campaign we recently launched and, and executed and give you a bit of insight on the ins and outs and the challenges we're facing. Um, in terms of PR and comms team, so we have a central team, a global team here at the headquarters in Barcelona. There are 10 people um, of corporate communicators, consumer com communicators, uh, social media, content and design, right? And then in our key markets, we have PR managers. Portugal and Spain, that's our, Spain and Portugal is our li largest markets, Italy. Um, Southeastern Europe as a cluster region. Um, Poland, you name it. Ukraine was actually our fourth largest markets be market before the war and we're currently still operating there. Um, and Africa, we're one of the first companies to move into. Now, those PR managers in those markets, they're largely independent. They're very autonomous. Uh, it's, they don't report to headquarters. They report to the local general manager. Now, that faces a challenge for the headquarters team because you come up with a campaign idea, a campaign idea and the local PR managers tell you, well, great, but I have other priorities here, right? My general manager wants me to help the business grow and position ourselves in the country, so it always takes a little bit of convincing. Now, I wanna highlight this way of convincing our partners through um, this campaign that I mentioned, uh, convincing our, our PR managers through a campaign that I mentioned. Um, because one of our main missions is to position ourselves as the best ally for small and medium businesses. Now, businesses benefit from Glovo through various ways. We help them save money and time by helping them with the marketing, we help them grow their business and customer base, we help them running their operations smoothly and they get a lot of data with us and dashboards where they see uh, where people order, when people order the most, etc. Now, the umbrella program of all of this is called Global Local and that is a program that we launched uh, recently. Essentially, it's a single sign-on website. Any business owner can go to that website, register the business, and, but it's more than that. It is actually a platform with all the tools that are self-service tools that the business owner can use from advertising features to um, those dashboards that I mentioned to uh, various tools to grow the business. Now, when we launched this, 
we were thinking, okay, how can we launch this? It's very much, you know, uh, no journalist is really gonna talk about it in that sense, uh, say, oh, Global Launch this program, that's great, so we had a bit of a challenge to uh, make noise around this. Now, we thought about it a little, little bit differently and decided to combine all the elements that we have available to, the, to us in a Global 360 campaign, meaning a consumer PR campaign driven by video, a corporate PR campaign driven by data-driven activation, meaning a study that we conducted with business owners, uh, thought leadership activations, paid activations, and general press releases and news announcements. And all of this obviously is supported by uh, our own social media and content channels. Now a key objective of that campaign was position Glovo as a key ally for SMEs, humanize the Glovo brand, which is a larger, um, let's say, part of the strategy that, we're, that we've been carrying out for the past two years to put faces behind the company and, and showcase those stories. But it's not only that, right? This is where the challenge came in. This is where PR managers in the local markets told us, okay, great, but you know, we have other priorities here. So how do we convince them? We make sure that the campaign we create actually has a direct business goal and a direct business objective. And that direct business objective is to get people to sign on to that website and to get more businesses to that website. Support the local acquisition of partners and in the end, um, have a positive impact on partners acquisition and retention. Now what this does is you get the attention very quickly from the partners team if you help them achieve their own KPIs. Now, diving a little deeper into this campaign, what did we do on the corporate side? We did, um, we conducted a multi-market SME survey um, in our key markets. We're operating in, or, or, let's say, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Poland, Romania are our largest five markets. Now, in the UK, we don't operate. But for this campaign, for us, it was essential to also get the attention of international media, international English-speaking media. We wanted the Bloomberg's and the Forbes's of this world. So how do we do that? We usually, they're based in the UK, right? So there's some element that we thought would be helpful if we included some insights on um, on the UK in this. And we asked partners, our, not just our partners, but businesses in general in the retail and restaurant space, how they do after um, COVID. What are their main challenges that they're facing now? And then of course link this to us by saying, how do you work with technology partners? How do you work with platforms? How relevant do you see platforms within um, your work and to support your business and help you grow? Now, this was a global campaign that was designed on H in HQ level, but then we got the local buy-in by going through our partners team, kind of scaling it down. Partners team was telling the partners team in their local markets in Poland and Romania and Bulgaria, hey, the comms team here wants to do this. We could actually benefit from this because it's not just great for PR, it's actually great insight for us as well. It informs our strategy. And we, we need to know what businesses think. We need to know what challenges they face in order to inform our pitch. Um, so each market, each market designed, so we designed the global st study and then each market adapted that study to their local needs and found local research houses in those markets and worked with the local agencies in those markets to design the comms plans around them. We don't have one big network agency with different offices. We actually work in all the 25 markets. We work with a different agency. And then you also, you, you follow that same concept through local and global media activation. You catalyze the global project by executing it locally and generating more coverage. Now, what did we find out? I'm not gonna go through this in, in detail, but for example, cost of living crisis, obviously not so surprising anymore, this was uh, last year, but, um, Businesses struggle to reach new customers. Businesses say they're in survival mode, which became the, the key message of the, um, of the study here in the UK, 70% agreed with that. Um, businesses say they're, they feel unprepared for the future. And then as I said, we link that to um, 
to our business by saying technology partners can help them pave the way for recovery and to thrive. They say like 80% in, of businesses in Italy say the collaboration with the delivery partner is fundamental and necessary for the business. Um, to fundamental to reach new customers, and so on. Now, a campaign approach relatively by the book, if you will, on the, on the global side, um, compiled a global report, had a microsite, published that report, shared it exclusively with journalists, um, played this through our own media channels, obviously, and we're still using that data to this day for thought leadership pieces, for blog posts, for social media posts, and so on. Um, earned media, and then we also ran a paid campaign with Financial Times. Um, now this paid campaign with the Financial Times was aimed at, it included a link, a backlink to the Global Local website so that we could actually track um, those signups that were resulting from our activation. Now the results were 287 pieces of coverage uh, in, all 20, in all 25 markets, obviously the important Thing to mention is we didn't just communicate that study, but we linked that obviously with the announcement of Global Local. Um, we had a 36% increase in new users visiting and interacting with the Global Local website. Now that made the partners seem very, very happy. There was 860 new users attributed to PR initiatives and the generation of 65 sales leads from that is just based on the Financial Times. Um, because that's, uh, that allowed us to track it. Probably indirect, it's a lot, it's a lot higher. Some articles included backlinks as well. 68% uh, of the pieces mentioned Global Local in the headline. We got 100% positive coverage, which is also good for our standards, considering um, we work in a relatively, um, um, in, in an environment that is largely criticized as well, often criticized in, uh, in media. And we got a pretty high share of tier one and tier two uh, media. So that was the corporate aspect of it. But then there's a consumer aspect of it. And that got a little more entertaining. And as I said, it fed into more our um, global strategy that we're delivering in general uh, on humanizing the brand. So humanizing the brand, actually highlighting our partners, who are our partners. We always talk, of par talk about partners but who are those businesses? What makes those businesses? What are the stories behind those businesses? We wanted to get our customers closer to the human side of the brand um, to expand that narrative and, of course, impact our social media metrics as well. Those key metrics were reach, video news, and engagement. And again, we carried it out in our five largest markets, complementing the uh, corporate side of the step. Now, what we did was essentially just go to partners and say, now tell us, do you know, we have account managers, right? They're in charge of a number of, of, of small restaurants and businesses. Do you know of any of those businesses that have an interesting story to tell? And so we worked directly with the business in identifying uh, those partners, reach out to them, and then we went there and produced the video which, with a very much, uh, um, a simple format. Now, one of those videos, now the, these are obviously in the local languages, so I'm not gonna just play the whole thing. They were about a minute to two minutes long, but just so you have an impression of, of what these uh, videos look like. I can, well, on the Spanish one, I didn't link, see? Huh? <laughs> but hey, the Polish one, let's play this. Okay. <laughs> Cześć, jestem Stachu i razem ze swoją żoną prowadzę Redneka. Cześć, jestem Sena. Od dziecka praktycznie marzyłem o tym, żeby właśnie móc nie tyle, co być kucharzem, ale prowadzić swoją gastronomię. Jeśli chodzi o mnie, to ja chciałam mieć po prostu miejsce, lokal, w którym ja bym mogła gromadzić e, swoich znajomych. Uh, just a couple seconds of the, couple seconds as an example, and then we have Romania, for example, here as well. Vă salut cu drag, sunt Radu Concha, asociat în pizzeria Treponte de la Cluj Napoca. Înainte să încep businessul ăsta, nu am avut nicio treabă cu bucătăria, cu pizza în special. O spăta trebuia să fiu și zice, nu am pizza, pizzaiolo, cum îi spun ei. Nu vrei să înveți meseria asta că vei... 
Within those videos later on, they uh, obviously talked about their collaboration with Volvo and how we helped them grow their business. But that was the general idea. Now, that was the first time we carried out a video campaign like that. Glovo is a fairly new company. The comms team has been growing over the past uh, two years, doubled in size. So we, there's still a lot to learn. There's still a lot to, to experiment, and that's great. And there are a couple learnings that we drew from this consumer campaign that I wanted to share with you. Well, one was maybe not too surprising, but we largely carried this out through Reels and Instagram Reels and TikToks. Instagram in this uh, instant is king. Many partners, many of those restaurants that we highlighted, they have profiles there. There is an amplification, right? The message of the videos, you can share it. Now, then we put ad spend behind that as well. And a couple, you know, er define an urban audience, focus on the partner city, define age uh, 35 to 44, which happened to be the uh, most engaging um, user group in terms of age. And um, put some bid ad bidding behind it with a uh, minimum of one week. Now, then we had collateral content from that production, from those videos. Um, for example, do a promo or a competition or something with the partner that you can um, then carry out after, after that or within that uh, campaign. Working with organic influencers, so any user-generated content was great because suddenly you have a lot of attention. And then also micro-influencers that helped us uh, distribute those videos or even appear in those videos in some cases. Community management is, is important as well. We don't have a com community management per se. Any customer complaints or customer comments are handled by customer uh, service, so we don't really have a social media community management. But in this instance, like, we realized that when you actually proactively engage with your target group, obviously, you get a lot more uh, positive feedback, you get a lot more engagement. So in the end, what was the, what was the result? result? He put some of these key metrics that we measured here. Um, maybe, I know Spain is framed there, but I think the most impressive for us was actually Poland. You have to put this into relation to the follower numbers that we have on a channel like Instagram. In, it, in Poland, we have 7,000 followers on Instagram. It's not that much. In, in Spain, we have 70,000. But in Poland, it's six, 7,000. So getting a total reach of 4.3 million for Glovo in Poland was pretty huge. Uh, total views of a million, 3.4 million impressions, um, and grew our follower base quite a bit. So this was a bit of an insight into the consumer side of that uh, campaign. And I don't know how we're doing on time, but I'm also happy to take any questions if there are any. Tricky questions. May I? Sure. Thank you very much for your presentation, by the way. It's, it was really great. Do you have a team? monitoring social media or you do this uh, using tools? Um, we do have, we do have, it, well both, uh, we have a social media team for uh, four people and um, we do use uh, tools as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Redpoint for, um, Redpoint for, for monitoring, we work with Sprout Social, mm -hmm. uh, more for posting, scheduling, measuring and so on. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry I will ask one more. I'm really sorry for that. And if anyone wants to, to have a qu ah, and that's model. Okay, ma uh, so uh, please. No, no, go ahead. I'll be the last one. I was curious about uh, the local Instagram pages that you mentioned. So how do you um, how do you comment having local Instagram pages versus one big global Instagram page? And also, what's the relation? for you now, how is it changing with TikTok and Instagram? What's the social media landscape? Yeah, um, so we do have, it's, it's, it's also a bit, um, uh, so we have local channels in all the markets. Now, in some instances, those local channels are run by the PR teams. In other instances, it's more run by the marketing growth team. And those are very much more growth channels, more about advertising and tiers. You know promotions and that kind of stuff, whereas in the um, channels that are run by the PR team, we try to tell, we, we try more through storytelling, 
Um, we tried to highlight local partners. We tried to highlight the local teams. Again, put the, put the faces. And, um, and really try and uh, create, this, create this local community. And local community for a very local service like Glovo can only be created in local, in local channels, right? We do have global channels as well, LinkedIn, for example, which is largely for, used for corporate content and employer branding. Um, and then we have a global Instagram channel, which is called Life at Glovo, which is supposed to showcase and highlight the, well, the, empl the employee life and the, the, the team vibes and the head here at headquarters, and our little mascot that we have, uh, pineapple, and, <laughs> and so on and so forth. So, yeah. Okay, there was yeah yeah, yeah. It, it's it's all it, it goes along with us again being a local local service and really trying to highlight that we support local communities we support local businesses uh, suddenly the mom and pop shop around the corner has access to the entire city and can grow their business by 200 percent if they want to and really take us on right so this is kind of the um, this local aspect of it is super important. Hence, the fact that the PR managers, as I mentioned before, have so much autonomy and report to the local business as opposed to HQ. Which sometimes can, can be a pain. For me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, Giuseppe, did you want to yeah, I, I have a question. Congratulations for uh, <clears throat> a very interesting uh, presentation. Very, very, really, very interesting. Mm, do you also have a, a policy to, especially going back to the situation when uh, it becomes a little bit harsh, like uh, Kalashnikov is uh, laughable, but uh, you know, <laughs> not from inside, I believe. Um, do you have uh, policies to align the talent, the people within internal communication, how to align people on uh, in situations that uh, require a little bit of uh, good communication? Uh, you mean how employees post about Glovo on, online? Or? How you communicate to your employees on key, uh, on key things. Uh, yeah. So again, it's a bit of a structural, structural topic because we, we do have an internal communications team as part of the, the people HR team. Um, so largely we use email or, or Slack for, for any internal announcements. But we do try to um, create spillover effects and engagements between internal channels and external channels. If we have the Life at Global channel that I mentioned before, which is largely an employee-driven and, and, and global employee-featuring channel, um, we could put, we, what we would do sometimes, for example, is to have a photo contest or something that we encourage employees to participate in through our social, through our internal channels, like Slack, and then post that on their private Instagram linking life at Glovo, allowing us to, to create an engagement. So that's kind of how we um, link internal and external channels. Does that answer it? Yeah. Madeline. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to come back to the campaign that you're running. And, and since we were all here involved in cross-country campaigns, I'd like to ask a very specific question. And that is uh, regarding the videos per country. How many videos did you produce? Is there a, is the, is there a minimum um, when you do these campaigns cross-country? No, there wasn't a minimum. We started with a pilot with a pilot in, in Spain, um, which got really good results. Um, and as I said, we focus on the on the key markets. So by now, I think we've over the past year we've produced probably about thirty five to forty videos in total um, in all the markets. Um, not in all, and not actually in all the markets, but in the in the key markets. And we try to. As I said, kind of always, always learn what works, uh, what works better than what stories work better, etc. And um, and try to then implement that into in, in other markets as well. So what we do with the study and with those videos and what we generally what generally is our approach is to create really scalable um, scalable uh, cam campaigns that can be designed at HQ. And then we give the right tools and the budget as well. These, these projects are largely uh, HQ budget driven, so local PR managers don't have to touch their own budget for that, um, which is an important aspect in the discussion and convincing people. Uh, 
and um, and then try to give them the right tools and a playbook at hand that they can that they can use and, and s simply follow. Because it's not like uh, our consumer PR manager here at HQ is is flying for every production to Bulgaria and then to Poland, and so on. No, you give them the right um, the right tools and playbooks and guidelines, and then they look for a production company and production partner to film those videos. Then they're being sent back here for editing, so we make sure they all have the same format. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Chrissy from United Partners. Uh, so my question is uh, based on what criteria did you choose the stories for the videos? So was the criteria equal for each market? As you said, like, uh, did every market receive a specific list? Uh, and because I believe this is important uh, in terms of the results afterwards uh, that you shared. You said that in, in Poland, yeah. The engagement was really right. big. Yeah, we try to we try to um, identify partners that already have a social media presence because the idea is to help them grow their social media channels and the other way around. It's kind of hand in hand um, idea, which is great, by the way, for the account managers and the sales team because now they can put this into their sales presentations and go to new partners and say, "Here, this is how we can help you with your business and your social channels." Um, but generally, we ask the account managers, and whenever you ask the account managers, they know the, their businesses and they know the, the businesses within that portfolio that have a bit more of an interesting story, right? Um, because they're, they're based in the local market, so we rely kind of on their um, expertise and their advice on that. And, and then they would say, you know, Redneck here, that what we featured in Poland, they have a fun story to tell. These are really two, you know, cool guy, cool, cool girl who can probably also tell the story in a in a very captivating manner. Um, whereas, you know, because you also have to kind of see that the person that you interview is comfortable in front of the camera and that they really want to do it. More questions? Okay, I'll not ask my last one. It would have been uh, again for crisis communications. Uh, but for a kind of traditional crisis communications not coming from social media. Have you ever had one? Uh, crisis? crisis? Yeah. All the, every week. Every week, okay. Every week. Okay, We're so thank you very much. Th this is.